how to force men to chase you like a video game. Number one, we have the concept. The concept of video games, you're going to start at level zero. You're going to then, as you go on, you complete challenges, you uh, complete missions, you complete all these other things, you begin to level up and level up and level up, right? You get better weapons, you get better tools, you get better resources, and while you're leveling up, the missions never stop. As technology got better, games got bigger. And when I say bigger, I mean longer, taking longer to complete. To the point now where we have games where the sole purpose or the most interesting part of the game is the multiplayer. And the amazing part about the multiplayer experience in the most addicting games is that there is never a finish line. There is never a finish line in these games. There is never a point where you get to the tip of the top and that's it. You're done. You have no more to complete. But I want you to understand, right, as you create missions, as you create challenges, there also has to be a reward system for each individual challenge because if you don't create the right reward and challenge system you will have no game okay and he will not chase you he'll also not be addicted to you men naturally want to chase they want to chase i know you for you guys that hear me say that you guys are like what no but the men nowadays they're feminine but the men nowadays they don't want to chase but the men nowadays they want to be the woman i'm not saying you're wrong but what i am saying is naturally inside their soul, deep down inside them, where the caveman live, where the natural man lives. He wants to be in a position where he's chasing after not just you, but the things that he wants in life. I need to make it very crystal clear to you. Listen to me. I need to make it. Listen to me. Look into my eyes. If you're half paying attention, pay attention to this part because none of this stuff will work if you don't pay attention to this part. I need you to understand you are not trying to motivate every single man on this earth to chase you like a video game. Stay with me, okay? You're probably like, what? I thought that was the whole point. You're trying to motivate the men who are actually motivated to chase after you, to chase you like a video game. What do I mean by that? Going on a dating app and swiping left or right on a girl, chatting with her for a couple of days, and then going on a date with her is the path of least resistance for the men. And you might think, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with taking the path of least resistance? Maybe he doesn't want to go to the club. Maybe he doesn't want to go to the bar. The problem with that is the man has to be the pursuer. So if the man has to be the pursuer, but he's in a mind state and a mind frame that I want everything as quick and easy and painless as possible, how are you supposed to motivate that man to chase you when he's already in the mindset that I want the most quick and easy and painless thing as possible. The reason I bring all that up and the reason why it's so important to what we're discussing today is because I know the first thing you're itching. I know some of you, you're addicts, you're itching. You're just thinking, oh my God, I'm going to use all of these techniques on this one guy who doesn't like me. <gasps> oh my God, I can't wait to use these techniques on this guy that doesn't like me, doesn't text me, does, has, doesn't even acknowledge my existence and doesn't care about me and basically has a whole nother girlfriend. I can't wait to use these techniques on him. You're not trying to attract everyone you're trying to attract the right guys, right? And so there are guys out there who are motivated to chase after things and don't just want the quickest, easiest, most painless thing possible. Because remember I said that's a mindset and the way how you go about your relationships is the way that you'll go about your life. So there's a lot of men, a majority of men actually, who have no real purpose, goals, or desires. They just want to chase cat, okay? And that's all they want. They just want to do the bare minimum in life and chase as much cat as possible. You do not, listen to me, you do not want to be trying to attract those men. So for those of you who are like, but this method doesn't work on everyone. This method won't work on him. And da, 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 da. Well, that's because he doesn't like you and he's not even interested in chasing after anything at all. He wants everything to be painless. Number two, we have the reward system. Now, remember, I just told you we broke down what video games are like. We broke down the concept. We broke down why the men are so addicted to the video games and why they keep coming back to the video games. 
And so we're trying to get you to embody a video game. And one of the main concepts of a video game is the challenge and reward system. One doesn't work without the other. They're like black and white. They're like light and dark. You can't have light without having dark. You can't have black without having white. You can't have reward without having challenge and vice versa. You can't have challenge without having reward. So it's very important that you understand this dynamic. And it's very important that you also understand the reward system that you're going to be using. Now, this is where I want you to focus. You are the reward in totality, okay? That's just how the, the cookie crumbles, okay, in the world. But you need to treat yourself as the reward, okay? And what I mean by that is if you are the reward, then you need to create a system in which the more he can access you is a reward for the behavior or the challenges that he's overcome. There needs to be a reward system which includes access to you that is the level up, you know, tier system where, okay, you complete this challenge, you do this thing, you level up, you get a little bit more access. You complete this challenge, you do this thing, you level up, you get a little bit more access. You complete this next one, you level up, right? And it's a constant cycle of do a little bit, get a little bit. Balance the reward system properly and carefully. If your reward system is out of whack, then you will not see the proper response. You have to be very balanced and strategic and calculated with your rewards. For example, he takes you out on one date and you sleep with him the first night. That is not a <laughs> an equivalent reward, okay? Sleeping with him because he took you out on a nice date for one night is not an equivalent reward. When you do something like that, you're going to throw the challenge reward systems way out of whack and he's not going to want to chase after you because you've just given him a crazy you think about it like this in video game terms. You've given him a level 100 reward. So what people would regularly get if they played the game for a year straight, you've given him a level 100 reward at the very beginning when he's level zero. So imagine if you sat down, I know you guys don't, most of you guys don't play video games, maybe some of you do, but imagine if you sat down to play a video game and the moment you sat down in the first 10 or five minutes, you got the level 100 reward that everyone works for for one year. Okay, so cool. I got the reward in five minutes. What else is there to do now? I got the whole reward in five minutes. I'm a level 100 in literally five minutes. This game is literally boring as hell now. It, 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 like you, I want you to soak it in, okay? Because it's like the intrinsically, the concept of... I have to work to get to something or somewhere. If I receive that too quickly or too soon, there will never be an appropriate response of appreciation or gratitude for the hard work I had to put in to get there. That just doesn't include working for it in the sense of when you don't allow him to work for it by get, you know sleeping with him, right? That also includes being needy, being desperate, chasing after him. OK, because a lot of you are in so much fear that you're going to lose him or in so much fear that he doesn't want to be with you or in so much fear that he'll go find another girl that's better than you, that you begin doing the pursuing, you begin doing the chasing or you begin kind of like hoarding him where you're like, please don't go anywhere. Please don't go anywhere. Please don't. Blah, I'm so scared. That also that also does not allow him to chase after you because how can he chase after you when you're the one pursuing him when you're the one all up in his face when you're the one being like please don't go please don't don't look at this girl don't look at that girl i want i please i i, I just if i'm not the only person that you care about i'm gonna fall apart right he has no room to chase after you you're literally not allowing him to chase after you if you do that now as we relate to the reward system and I know that some of you guys are like, but what's the reward? What should I do? What blah, blah, blah. I, 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 Tell me exactly what to do. I don't know. I, I, tell me exactly. I just need to know exactly. Tell me word for word. I got to do it word for word. Relax. Okay. I need you to grasp these concepts because life is not just me. Give it to you. You do it exactly like that. If you understand the concept, you'll be able to apply it in whatever way best suits you. Okay, you, that's why it's so important that you listen to everything I'm saying, not just wait for me to tell you, do this like this, like that. And then that's all you do, but you don't even understand what you're doing. 
Okay. So if you see that he is being respectful, taking you out, holding doors open for you, being kind and generous, you know, paying for things, doing all the great, great stuff that gentlemen do. I want you to put your concentrated effort into acknowledging how much of a gentleman he is, how respectful he is, how much better of a man he is than the other men in this world. Make him feel like the man. That's part of the ways you can reward a man, even at the beginning of a relationship, is by making him feel like the man. That's actually one of the best ways to do it because men have the biggest what? The biggest, not the biggest, you know, they don't have big that. They have big egos, okay? And all men, right? That doesn't matter the man. And when he feels like the man, right? When he feels like he's doing a great job, so much better than all the other men. I so much bigger, stronger than all other men. I big, strong man. Ah, he feels good. When he feels good, you're creating a positive feedback loop, okay? Where he does things that you want him to do. He acts the way that you want him to act. And so, he feels good. I feel like the man. My ego's boosted. I'm so much better than all these other men. You acknowledge how much better he is. You make him feel good about the fact that he's been doing the work and pursuing you and being patient and being consistent. And when he's actually interested in you, that positive feedback loop is going to make him want to do that more. I want you, I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds bad. I know it sounds wrong. I want you to treat your men like dogs, not treat them like a dog in a bad way, but treat them like a dog you are trying to train. I know some of you have bad dogs, so don't treat your dog like you treat your man if you have bad dogs, because you're trying to train your man to be a good man, not a bad man, not a bad boy. So it's very important, the same way you would train a dog, right? You're going to reward a dog for good behavior so that the dog can make the connection. Hey, good behavior gets rewarded. If I listen, if I do what is instructed of me, I will be rewarded. And the reason I made it separate from even challenges is because low key, it's actually more important even than the challenge is knowing how to properly structure the reward because that positive feedback loop is even more powerful than the negative feedback loop of saying, oh, you did bad, you did wrong. That positive feedback loop in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the proper ratio, is what keeps them motivated to keep going and keep going. Because once you can help, uh, once you can have a guy understand, hey, don't cross this boundary, don't do this, don't do that, and I mean what I say, cool, that's good. B guys that are interested in you and respect you, most of them aren't gonna cross any major boundaries, right? So that is already most, for the most part, taken care of. The reward system is what's going to keep him pursuing you over and over and over again. This is why you have to have such a delicate balance. This is also why, this is why I say, listen to, listen to these concepts because this is what's actually gonna help you. This is why it's also so important not to get so overly excited that that boy likes you, that you start, you start shivering, you start itching, and you're like, oh my God, I wanna spend every moment of every waking day with you, and I wanna, I wanna sleep in the same bed as you, I wanna, I wanna, sh I wanna shower with you, I wanna go, I wanna sleep in your skin, I wanna, I wanna eat breakfast with you, let's eat breakfast out of the same bowl, oh my God, can I chew your food, oh my God, if you have gum in your mouth, can I chew that gum? Like, don't get like that because what's going to happen is you're going to throw that reward system way out of whack. You're going to start rewarding him for doing nothing. You're going to start rewarding him for just existing. I'm I'm so serious, right? Because we all get emotional and you're women, so you're emotional beings. That's nothing wrong with that. But you also have to understand sometimes your emotions will start having, will start sabotaging your own relationship. And what I mean by that is when you're trying to get a guy to chase you, there's a very particular techniques and very particular ways you have to go about it. So there's nothing wrong with being excited and liking a guy and wanting to spend time with him. There's nothing wrong with that. But you also have to understand if you allow that emotion to go out of control and get out of control, you're going to get into that place where, oh my God, I want to spend every moment with you. Oh my God, I don't want you to leave. My, I don't want to leave your side. I just got to be with you all the time, all the time, all the time. And so you're going to begin thinking to yourself, oh my God, you're so amazing. I just, I just can't see my life without you. Oh my God, every, you're, just so, you're just the best, right? And what are you going to do? You're going to start overfeeding your dog. You're just going to start overfeeding your dog because you're like, oh my God, you're the cutest dog ever. And you just give him treats just for doing nothing. Just give him treats. When he's bad, you give him treats. When he's good, you give him treats. When he's doing nothing, you give him treats. He's sleeping, you give him treats. You're going to create a fat, obese dog, okay? A fat, obese dog who doesn't act right because there's no balance, right, between challenge and reward.
And 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 when there's no balance and rewards come for no reason or rewards come 24 seven, there's no understanding of what the right direction is, what the right actions are, what the right way to talk is, what the right way to move is. Right. There has to be an understanding of, OK, I should be moving in this direction as her man. This is what I should be doing for her. This is the type of man I should be for her. And I know for most of you, you're like, but he should already understand that. But he should already know that. Why doesn't he already know that? He should know how to be a man. I, I, cool. I know that that's the world we want to live in. I'm going to tell you the world we actually live in, where people need to be trained and directed in the right direction. It's great to know what you want in a partner. It's even better to show him that by rewarding him for doing the things in line with what you want. And remember, like I said before, don't think reward has to be, I sleep with you, okay? Some of you guys get so anxious that a guy's going to leave you or he'll stop caring about you that you think the only reward available to him is, is in between your legs, okay? Re take a chill pill, okay? There's way more rewards out there that you can give a guy that doesn't even require you to touch him. I know when I say reward, you guys want to get open your legs, get your hands out, get your mouth out. No, take, relax, okay? Relax. There is a lot of rewards that exist in this world outside of the physical, okay? And they're even more powerful than anything you could do with your hands or mouth, okay? Or in between your legs. And I'm so serious about that. Like, I'm not joking. Create a good reward system that you can properly balance out good behavior for, you know, make him feel good about it. Make him feel like the man. Talk, like, you'd be surprised how far talking about something can go. If you see him do something that you really appreciate, make sure there is, like, I, 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 I'm not joking. For example, he knows that you are working a 12-hour shift today. And he also knows that you have, let's say, a really important test, right? Let's say you're going to school and you're working. So you come back from your shift. And he knows you're doing, a, you have a really important test to study for in the next couple of days and you got to be focused and you work 12 hour shifts so you're so tired. So you come back and when you left the house, the house was dirty. It was a mess. You guys, maybe you guys had some friends over. He cleaned up the whole house. The house is spotless when you, when you come back, he's got some incense going and he's got a bubble bath running for you. I know that sounds like a dream life. I'm just saying hypothetically, right? You can have that though. Just hypothetically, right? So let's say you walk into that and he's like, I know you're really stressed out. I know you had a 12 hour shift. I know you got a lot of focus on. I got your notes here for you if you want to study. And I got a bubble bath running for you um, just for you to relax and take a chill pill. And if you want, I'll rub your feet. Let's just say a guy does that for you. I want you enjoy that. Be appreciative of that. The next day, though, the next day, this is the most important part, like the most important. The next day, I want you phone off. TV off. Focus on me. Let's have a sit down conversation. And you sit him down. You look him in the eyes, right? Hold his hand, whatever you need to do. And you tell him, I want you to know, I appreciate what you did for me yesterday so much. You took so much weight off of my shoulders by doing that. I wasn't expecting that. And the fact that I came home, you had already cleaned the house. Say back everything that he did. Every, I don't care if it's, Oh, you cleaned up the dog's poop that was on the side or there was a little crust on the side of the counter and I saw that you cleaned. I want you to mention every single detail that you noticed him doing for you and show your honest, genuine appreciation for it and how much of an amazing man he is for doing that for you. Okay. I know you're like, oh, this is so over the top. This is so, this is so relevant. Like this is so stupid. Like, why would I do it? I try it. And then come back to me, okay? Because I'm telling you, when someone, especially a man, goes out of their way, and obviously that was an example, but that could be with anything that he does for you that you know you're like, I want that behavior to continue. If you want that behavior, whatever behavior it is to continue, make sure this needs to be like the same way you would address it if you thought he was cheating and you'd be like, let's have a sit down conversation about this. This is really serious. Is the same way you reward him and you treat it when he does something or he does a behavior that you really want to continue. You make sure there is set aside time that you acknowledge how amazing that behavior was and how much you appreciate that behavior because that's going to create that positive feedback loop where he's like, oh my God, I am getting praised for doing this and for being the man that she needs me to be. 
what's that going to do? That's going to release that chemical reaction, that dopamine of like, ooh, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I feel good. My partner loves me. My partner appreciates me. I want that feeling more. This is why I say in the weirdest way, love is about the other person. Love is also about you as an individual. And the more you can understand, the better you can utilize that. So what I mean by that is when you're, when you're rewarding someone by telling you them how much you appreciate them, I know that you think that, oh, the reason they're going to continue doing it is for me. When in reality, the reason they'll continue doing it is for themselves. Because let's be real. It, sure, it feels good to give and help. It feels way better to give and help and be appreciated for it and get that positive feedback for being good and helping and being acknowledged for it and being praised for it. And so when you can create that positive feedback loop, people and human beings, men specifically, they start chasing that feeling of, I want to feel good and better about this, about this relationship. I want to feel like the man. I want to feel like I'm doing well. I want to feel your appreciation for me. So I'm going to do it over and over again. So number three, we have scheduling. This is going to be semi-complicated. Stay with me and we'll all grasp the concept and it will be great. Scheduling is very important because you want to create desire out of your availability. Remember I said access to you is part of the reward. It's a majority of the reward. You are the reward. So the access to you is also the reward. Scheduling plays a huge part in what you're trying to do in terms of turning yourself into the video game because there has to be a portion of him that wants more of you but doesn't feel like he's getting enough. I know this is going to throw a lot of you off and some of you will be really confused by this, okay? When these men are playing video games, the only thing taking them away from the video game is whether it be work, school, family, responsibilities. If they are addicted to that video game, every moment they spend away from that video game, they spend all that time thinking about the next time they're going to play that video game again. You're probably like, so what does that matter? When they are playing the video game, that means they always leave unsatisfied. Are you understanding this concept? Follow me right now. If they leave unsatisfied, because they have to stop playing the game because they're tired or because they got to go get something to eat because they have work, because they have school, they got to do whatever it may be. The game becomes the thing that they want to come back to. Okay. Remember how I said, if the game feels incomplete, there feels like there's more to do. And so when you leave that game, it feels like you put a pause on something that is incomplete. And so it, it's like an itch you got to scratch. You got to go back. You got to level up more. You got to get to the next tier. You got to do the next thing. You got to get the next reward. You got to get the next. It, it just feels like oh, I just need the next thing. I just If I just got the next thing, I'd put it away. I'd put it down. If I just got the next level and the next reward, I'd put the game down. But as soon as you get to the next level and you get to the next reward, you need the next thing. And then the next one, and then the next one. And so every time you have to step away from that game, you feel unsatisfied and you feel like you haven't gotten your, your money's worth. You feel like there's still more to do. So this is how scheduling plays a role in that scheduling. Scheduling is so important because when you force him to schedule his time with you, first of all, that builds anticipation is anticipation to having to see you and be around you and how much time he's going to be able to get to to be with you that is good because all that time that he spent planning and building up towards that what is he going to be doing he's going to be thinking about you right the same way when the guys at work or that are addicted to video games are working they're like oh my god i can't wait to get get through this job because as soon as i get through this job i'm going to go back home i'm going to be playing some video games it's going to be I'm a crazy night tonight the same way the guys be telling you I, I take i play video games to get my mind off stuff i play video games to relax right that's what they're thinking when they're stressed out when they're at work when they're doing all that there's like i can't wait to go back play me some call of duty warzone man i can't wait to go back play fortnite i can't wait to go back play nba 2k man oh. and they're itching oh it's like an addiction and you need to make sure you use scheduling as a way to build that anticipation and to have him looking forward to the next time that he's going to see you. Now, very important. Okay. Very, very important. You do not 
if you really want to get chased and you really want him to treat you like an addictive video game, you do not pop up on an net unannounced. Definitely no. Okay. You also do not say yes to last minute disorganized hangouts. Okay. I know that's going to rub some of you the wrong way, especially at the beginning. If you don't want him to chase you, do whatever you want. If you want him to chase you, you do not say yes to disorganized, unplanned hangouts. Why? Because scheduling is so important for that addiction, for that chase, right? For that anticipation to build. It also sets a precedent, right? Or just like creates a structure in which he has to put in the effort of planning to see you in order to see you. And that in itself is a challenge that he must overcome to get and receive the reward. Do you see how this is fitting together now? The challenge doesn't have to be super something super big, right? Even the psychological challenge of saying, okay, I have to figure out how I can free myself up and, and in a time that she's also free, I also have to think of what we're going to do. I have to think of how long we can do it for. I have to think of where we're going to do it, all that stuff. That is a challenge in itself. And so the reward of actually being able to see you when he completes that challenge or he figures out, okay, I have this schedule for this week. Okay, I got my Tuesday open. You're not free on Tuesday, but you're free on Wednesday. I'm not free all of Wednesday, but you're free on Friday too. Okay, I'm free on Friday, but only for three or four hours in the afternoon. Okay, so maybe we can hang out three or four hours in the afternoon. I know you got this going on. I can pick you up from work. So if I pick you up from work, we'll have like two and a half hours to go here. We can go here. I know you want to try that, right? And there's a thought process, right? And a, and a challenge process of I've got to solve this problem solve this problem, solve that problem, find this solution, right? Right. And this is all building up to the next time that he sees you and the next time he's able to spend time with you, right? And this is all part of the scheduling. The scheduling also becomes a challenge where how am I going to get more access to you? The challenge is the access to you. He wants to feel like he's being challenged to get more and more access to you. And that's a good thing. So it's very important that you take care of the scheduling because if you don't take care of the scheduling properly, then he won't properly build that anticipation in order for the, for the next time that he's going to see you and the next time he's going to spend time with you. You do also don't want to make it too easy for him to schedule things with you. This is why, this is why I said it's very, it's a very bad practice to just hop on the, the when he says, Oh, come meet me at 3 AM right now. That's horrible, horrible practice because he doesn't build that anticip anticipation. You also set the precedent that he doesn't have to overcome any challenges in order to see you and get access to you. And what it also does is when he's not with you, there's no thought or brain power being put towards when is the next time I'm going to see that person? When is the next time I'm going to have access to that person? You know why? Because they know subconsciously that the next time they have access to you will be whenever they want. And the idea that they can have you whenever they want will stop them from thinking about the next time they can have you. Chocolate would stop being very interesting if you could eat chocolate all the time, 24 seven, never get fat, and you never had to worry about anything. Chocolate is interesting because chocolate tastes good, but you also think about chocolate or junk food or whatever because you can't eat it all the time, because you can't have it all the time. But the moment I were to put it in front of you all the time and you were to have it all the time, you wouldn't think about the next time you can have more junk food or more chocolate because psychologically, there's no reason to think about the next time you can have it because you can always have it and you always do have it, right? The more something is present to you all the time and readily available to you all the time, you literally can't spend time thinking about the next time you're going to have that thing or anticipating the next time you're going to have that thing. You don't want to become the girl and the person where he's no longer anticipating the next time he sees you because he knows whenever he's bored, whenever he's lonely, whenever he's aged, he can just call you or not even to call you. I'm, I'm being too ridiculous. He can just text you and you're going to show up at his door like DoorDash. Okay. Your DoorDash where all he has to do is send you a couple of texts, maybe say, and I miss you if he hasn't texted you in a couple of weeks and you show up at his door like DoorDash. That's very sad for you. Okay. We don't want that for you. You have to take care of scheduling. Let him build his anticipation. Even if you want him, even if you're not that busy, trust me, you do not want a guy to think that you're not that busy, right? He'll, he'll take advantage of you. 
Because when he realizes you're not that busy, he'll know subconsciously it's because you don't have much going for yourself or it's because there's not a lot of people fighting and battling for your time, which means you must not be that desirable or that interesting if people aren't fighting and battling for your time. And that's not just romantic partners. I'm talking friends as well. I'm talking um co-workers i'm talking work i'm talking passions i'm talking hobbies i'm talking best friend like there should be people competing with him for your time and if he doesn't feel like that and he feels like you're always available to him all the time he will never spend any time thinking about you like he would a video game he's never going to be thinking about when's the next time i can hop on my favorite video game when's the next time i'm going to be able to play oh i can't wait to play tonight there will never be any anticipation built for the next time he's going to see you if you're always there all the time. This is why I say you really have to take care of that that fear or that hole in your soul where you feel like, oh, I'm in fear of losing you. I can't lose you because I want so badly for you to be with me and I want so badly for you to like me and I need your validation and I need your attention, right? You can't be in that fear state if you're going to get this done properly because if you're in that fear state, the moment you start projecting that outwardly, you're not going to be able to to schedule and be patient yourself because you're going to want to see him at a moment's notice and you're going to want to answer him in a second when he says, hey, are you are you free right now? Yes, I'm free right now. I'll come right now. Do you want me to show up right now? I can be here right like in five minutes. I literally can leave my house in five minutes. I won't even put my makeup or or do anything. I won't wear I will barely wear anything. I'll just put on my lazy clothes and I'll come right now in five minutes because you're in that fear state. Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta be with you. If you like me even a little bit, that's enough for me. And just a little bit, I just need a little bit. So he's like, what's the point? I have access to you all the time. Don't need to put out any, any energy into scheduling time with you, scheduling anything with you. You're just there. You're literally just there all the time. You're just existing all the time. When you are doing the work of helping him, right? Cause you're helping him, helping him build that anticipation for you and for the relationship, right? or situationship or talking stage, he's going to feel like everything you do on that date or all the time that you spend together is so much more bigger and amazing. And the experience was so much more rich and magical. And so it's going to feed into that same when he's not seeing you, he's going to be thinking about how amazing that experience he had with you was. And so he's going to be what anticipating more the next time he's going to see you and have that same amazing experience. And so it becomes a snowball effect, right? You want to be, especially at the beginning, you want to be so focused on that quality over that quantity, because the more you throw in a whole bunch of quantity, you're going to have very low quality hangouts or time spent together. And if you're having a lot of low quality hangouts or time spent together, he's going to start thinking to himself, gee, she's cool, but like, huh, she's just kind of like, man. Uh, uh, she's cool. I like hanging out with her. She's chill. You like, listen, the last thing you want a guy, this is the pro tip. The last thing you want a guy to be describing you as is chill. What that chill is not really a description of you. Chill is really about what he feels when he's around you. Okay. And I know you might think, well, chill, that chill is good. Like he feels chill when he's around. No, no. He should feel like he's on fire. Okay. Chill is really representative about how you guys spend time with each other. It doesn't really make him feel super amazing. It also doesn't really make him feel super miserable. He just is indifferent to the way he feels when he's with you, which is why he says chill. It's not really that good. It's not really super bad. It's just kind of existing. The problem with that is you're never going to get a man to chase you when all he thinks about you is that you're chill. Do you think that he thinks Kim Kardashian is chill? Do you think he thinks Megan Good is chill? Think, really think psychologically what it would feel like to really actually desire someone so much that you want to chase after them. Do you think the feeling would be described as chill? Like I'm talking about the feeling you would, you feel internally when you're, when you're talking about chasing after someone, do you really think that person would describe the feeling of wanting someone so bad that they want to chase after them? Do you think they would describe that as chill? No, they're going to describe that as being intense as being, you know, all encompassing, as filling up and taking up all their brain space, as them obsessing, as an addiction, right? An addiction is not chill. Obsessing is not chill, okay? 
Chasing is not meant to be chill. You do not want guys to get the impression of you that you're just chill. Because what that means is he's not really having to work for you. There's no real amount of effort that requires to be with you or be around you or have access to you. He kind of gets everything that he wants from you. There's nothing in particular he's reaching for or has any goals or challenges he has to reach around you or with you or of you. Like you're just existing around him and he's cool with that. Doesn't make him feel mad. Doesn't make him feel super happy. It's just chill. Number four, we have not too easy, or we can also call it challenges. Now, I obviously talked about the reward system earlier on, and I told you that we were going to get to challenges because challenges is also a really big one. And it's, you can't have one without the other. You can't have black without white. You can't have light without dark. You can't have rewards without challenges. I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, this is playing games. Oh, this is why do we, why do I have to do this? Oh, why can't I just be me? Oh, why can't I just be honest? Cut that out. Okay. We're here to get men to chase you. You're going to have to use techniques to get those men to chase you. Okay. There's, you can't have both, right? If you want to live your life in the most natural flowy way where you don't require any work or techniques or nothing like that. Cool. Go be over somewhere else frolicking in a flower uh, bloom. That's fine with me. If you want to get the men to chase you, you're going to have to use some techniques. That's fine though. You can get what you want though. Right. Remember, like how we I talked about at the very beginning, it's not an accident that you see those kids with the flies on their faces on the infomercial where they're telling you if you just donate one hundred dollars, you'll solve, you know, the hunger of these African kids with the flies on their faces. You don't realize it when you're watching it, but there's a man right with a twenty thousand dollar camera and a lighting crew. Right. And then a guy with a boom mic and a director behind them who's directing all the different angles to get right. You see it on the screen and you're sad and you're emotional about it. So you give money to people that you've never met. Right. And that you don't even know if it's getting to them because you're sad about what you're seeing on the screen. I say that say that's meant to elicit a response in you. And the reason it's meant to elicit a response in you is because people understand that there are particular ways to manipulate people in order to get what they want. So it's the same way that you have to do it in order to get what you want. You need techniques. So you need challenges. You want to make it challenging for him to access you. You also want to make it challenging for him to see you. You also want to make it very challenging for him to get your squirtle. The challenges are so, so critical. The same way how I said you the the rewards have to be in the right ratio, so do the challenges. They have to be in the right ratio. If they are in the wrong ratio, you're going to demotivate him from continuing to chase. This is this is why you can't have one without the other, and they both need the very very delicate balance. You want to challenge a man just enough that it keeps some friction in the relationship that forces him right to not feel like he's getting these things easily you're going to eliminate the chase a lot of times if you make things too easy for them we know the most obvious way in terms of making it too easy for them to get access to your squirtle right we know that way it's very straightforward but also making it too easy for them to get access to you in general and i'm talking about like your mind your mind your spirit your your time I talked about scheduling earlier. You also, you, you, like I said, like with scheduling, you don't want to make it too easy that he can see you every day or see you last minute. You have to create some challenges, even if you have to be busy, even if you have to fake being busy, right? My advice to you would not to fake being busy. My advice to you would be to find hobbies and passions that will actually make you busy. But even if you have to, last case scenario, you have to fake, be worst case scenario, you have to fake being busy, do that. Because you cannot find yourself in a situation where you're making it too easy. There is no video game effect there anymore. Okay. There's no video game in that. If you make it too easy for him, he's not going to feel like he needs to push towards something, right? Actually push, like actually push towards it. He's not going to feel like he has to push towards it. If you are making it so easy, it stops becoming a challenge then. And if it stops becoming a challenge, the reward is diminished. That's why I say you can't have one without the other and they balance each other out. If the challenge is too easy, the reward won't feel rewarding enough. Also, if the challenge is too hard to overcome, the reward won't feel appropriate for the amount of work that was required. Are you following me? Okay. You have to balance it out very 
carefully. Don't go challenging a man so much where he feels like you're no longer interested in him. That's why you can't take it to any extreme, right? You don't want to give so much challenge that you never, like you never respond to him. You never text him back. Like you never speak to him. Like you never answer his calls to the point where he goes, okay, actually, I think this girl is just not interested in me. Okay. I think this girl just doesn't like me, or maybe she's like got a, another man. You do not want it to be a situation where he's not motivated enough to go to the next challenge, right? To try to get the next reward because you've made it so hard and so exhausting that he no longer feels like there's any point in going to the next level. You, you do realize the same way in video games, because this is all about how to be like a video game. You do realize that these developers of these video games could make it close to impossible to actually level up to the next level, right? You do realize like these creators of these video games could create a video game that's impossible to beat like impossible. And the reason they don't do that, right? Because if you think about it, oh, but if they create a video game that's impossible, then that means that people will play it forever. And then they'll never run out of money because those people will play their game for forever, forever. That's what you would think, right? But what actually happens is the opposite. After a while, if something becomes too challenging and there's no way to gauge, hey, I'm getting better or I'm getting closer or closer or closer to the top, if there's no way to gauge that and it just feels like challenge after challenge after challenge and I'm not getting anywhere, then people give up, okay? So your game can't be an impossible game where it doesn't feel like there's any level up. And it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere. And it just feels like it's just challenge after challenge after challenge. And I'm not really getting rewarded or get getting anywhere with any of these challenges. I just keep failing over and over again. That would also be pointless. And that will also demotivate him and stop him from continuing to chase you and be addicted to you like a video game. Because video games have challenges, but they're also able to be overcome. They're not impossible. They might be hard. They might be hard but they're not impossible. Okay. And this is where you have to start. This is the video game analogy is so perfect because it almost applies in every single way. This is where you have to start being strategic with the difficulty level that you give each individual man that you might meet or come across at each individual time. What I mean by that is in a video game, when you're going through the multiplayer, where you're going through the storyline, a lot of times, if you want to complete the game or you want to, you want to play the game, but maybe the level is a little bit too difficult for you, right? You can put it on easy mode, right? I'm not saying you should be on easy mode. Don't ever be on easy mode. I'm just giving you the concept. You can also put it on medium difficulty or you can put it on hard difficulty. Now, people who are really motivated to not just be good at the game, but be the best at the game, want to beat it on hard difficulty. There'll also be a portion of people that maybe don't have the skill set to beat it on absolute extreme difficulty, but they still want the challenge. So they're going to find the balance between something being challenging, but not so hard that they can't ever progress. Right. And that's the level they're going to be uh, playing the most. So I say that to say the same way with you, right? You need to gauge what the right balance is and what the right amount of challenge that that man is willing to deal with. He still needs to be motivated to pursue, but what the right amount of challenge that man is able to deal with that you can give him and he will still consistently pursue. Because remember, you can't just ignore him forever, not speak to him, not answer him ever, and then expect that he's going to continue chasing after you forever time. That's not how it works. Eventually, he's going to give up. You have to be able to reward him strategically at certain points that he can feel like he's actually getting somewhere close to something. And one really great um, example and one really um, very important technique that I want all you guys to be using as it relates to not making it too easy, please write this down. Please listen to this. Please screen record this. Whatever you got to do to keep this information here with you. When you hang out with him, whether it be on a date, whether it be if you're at his house, I hope you're not at his house. If you're at his house, if he's at your house, wherever you guys are hanging out, I want you, whatever, whatever the planned amount of time is that you guys were going to hang out for, I want you to cut that short by about 20 to 30 minutes. I know it's going to sound super ridiculous and super unnecessary and super gamey like you're playing games, but I'm telling you, especially at the very beginning and at the beginning of the relationship, it will be good for you to cut these hangouts short so that you leave him wanting more of you. You never want, especially at the beginning, you do not want him to ever feel satisfied and satiated 
from a hangout with you. I know it sounds weird. He should feel good after he hang out with me. No, he should leave hanging out with you feeling like that wasn't enough time and he wants to hang out with you more. Why? Because the first thing he's going to do when he feels like that is he's going to text you and say, when's the next time we can go out? When's the next time I can see you again? When's the next time we can go out for coffee or go out on a dinner date or go out here or do this, right? You want him to be in that chronic state of, I need more. I didn't get enough. Oh, I need more. I wasn't enough, right? Because the moment you put him in that state of, yeah, I saw her. I'm good off of that for a couple of days. That means you've gone about this wrong because he won't be thinking about you for the next couple of days because he's so satisfied with what he got from you. That's why these guys go on a date with you. Then they sleep with you on the first night and then they don't text you for a couple of days. If that probably a couple of weeks because they're good. They got everything they wanted from you. There's nothing more that they're seeking. There's nothing more that they desire. There's nothing more that they want to chase after. Cool. I have no reason to talk to you. I don't have any reason to message you. I don't even have a reason to be courteous or nice or kind or pretend like I care. I'm super good. Up until I'm aged again or up until I feel like utilizing you again, I'm not going to message you, not going to call you, not going to pursue you. And number five, level down. As you create these reward systems, as you create these challenges, you also need to be cognizant and aware if he does not complete the challenge the way the challenge is meant to be completed or he fails or does the wrong thing right or he doesn't follow the instructions level down challenge mission failed okay minus a thousand points the reason that's so important and i know this is going to sound super bad, super wrong, super inappropriate. You want that man to have fear. I know that sounds weird. Okay. You want him to have fear and be in fear. I'm not talking about like, he's got to be like, oh my God, like in fear, like, oh my God, he's scared. He's going to, you're going to hit him or something. You want him to have a healthy amount of fear that if he does not do the right thing, there will be consequences. And remember what I said, the reward is the access to you. So what do you think the level down is? Less access to you. He's got to feel like he's leveled down in your books, in your eyes, in your world, that his actions have made you less important to him, less of a priority to him, right? That maybe someone else might take their place. Maybe someone else might come along and have be more of a priority than even them. Okay. I'm not saying you got to cheat on your partner. I'm not saying you got to do anything crazy, but what I am saying is it is so vitally important. If you want a guy to be addicted to you and chase after you, there has to be a healthy amount of fear that he feels. If I fail this, I'm going to be demoted. I'm going to go down some levels. This is going to be very bad for me because that fear will get him to focus in and concentrate on doing the right thing in exactly the right way that he can continue to level up. That fear that he'll fall behind, that fear that other people will beat him out, that fear that he'll no longer be the best or the most important or the number one is all good, healthy fear because it forces him to do the right thing or else. And not just men, we all need to have healthy fear towards our partners. The problem is when you have that fear within yourself and you're in fear of that man leaving you and not wanting to be with you and not wanting to be in a relationship with you, right? You don't want to do the job of giving him any fear that you would want to leave him because you're so scared. If he feels like you want to leave him, then he's going to leave you. And so you do everything you can do to make him feel like, oh, I want to be with you so bad. I want you so bad. I'll do anything so bad. Like, please just be with me, right? And you just become the ball of neediness and desperation. I think that there very much has to be the balance of the rewards, the challenges, and the fear that he might level down. And you, if you want to get chased, okay? I know maybe some of you don't want to get chased. Some of you don't care. Some of you is like, it's not important to me. If you really want to get chased, you need to be able to find that balance. Right. And that balance will be slightly different for each individual man that you meet. But it is incumbent upon you. I'm sorry, I don't like to use big words that you guys don't know what I'm talking about. That balance is going to be the key to getting him to chase you 
the right way, chase you like he would a video game, right? Leveling down is so important. If he has no fear, he's not going to have any reason to act right aside from getting the reward, right? But the reward can also be balanced with the fear of not doing the right thing. And that balance in the, the between those two things, between the fear of getting leveled down and the 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 positive emotions that you can get from being rewarded in between that balance is where people act how they're supposed to act and do what they're supposed to do right and treat you how they're supposed to treat you and chase after you because they want that reward but they also have the fear that if i do the wrong thing then i i not only will i not be rewarded but i'm i'll go a level down